Hey, Noelle Pickering here from Maneuvering the Middle, and I'm going to be teaching today on tools for remote math instruction. So this will include everything from some websites that you might want to utilize with your kids to how you can create a video lesson using materials that you might already have in a different format. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm actually using Loom, one of the tools that I am going to discuss, but uh, for the purpose of the rest of the presentation, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my little face down here. Okay, so this is something that we have created here with Maneuvering the Middle, and we created these remote math lessons for grades six through eight. And I have gotten so many questions about how we did it and um, how you as teachers could do that in, for your remote instruction as well. So that's kind of what inspired this presentation. So as you can see on the screen, we have annotated over um, some slides and different images, and there's also voice recording. So that's one of the things I'm gonna cover in here. But before we get Get started I wanted to also just point that out to those of you who are um, who are listening um, there are a few things you might want to consider and there's a lot of conversations happening in different Facebook groups um, discussing all the different um, apps and websites and different tools and I think that while it's so exciting to hear all the different things and what is working in other people's classroom it's really easy to get overwhelmed and kind of feel like you should be doing all of these different things. So here are some things that I would recommend you consider before you commit to something. So one thing to consider is will your students need another account and or a login? Um, depending on what you already have set up, sometimes using a new feature or a new website requires a student login. And if you haven't been using that all year long, that might be just another hindrance for students actually participating. So really consider if they need another account or login and how you could facilitate that, or is there something that you could do differently that wouldn't require that? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is how often are your students hearing your voice and seeing your face? Um, so I love Loom and I'll talk about it in a minute, but um, because they can, you can communicate with your voice and your face. You can even have a little bubble down in the bottom the whole time. Um, or there are other live calls, depending on what your district um, uh, requirements are. But um, what I would just remind you is that they're used to seeing you and used to hearing things taught in your voice and in your uh, mannerisms. So if possible, even if you're using pre-recorded things from um, the internet, YouTube, Khan Academy, any of those um, math tools, that you're also, even if it's just a quick like checking in using a video um, recording system of some sort. And then the last one is, have you communicated your expectations clearly? And this all started as a conversation in a Facebook group um, for a teacher that actually started really early with her remote instruction. And she said um, that she did a lot of things accidentally correct. And uh, that's why she thought she was having such high participation. And one of the things she said is she spent the very first day making them a video showing them exactly how things would work, um, just like I, I'm doing right here, or just like you might do for your students. So just really thinking about how you communicated those expectations clearly. Um, and really, video is going to be the best way to do that, if you, um, if you're, especially if you're introducing a new tool or a new um, website that you want students to use. That's something to consider. So these are just things to ponder before, before moving forward in any of the tools that I'm going to present today. And I'll try really clearly to articulate if it requires a login or if it's just something for you as the teacher. The last thing I wanted to share is that we created a free remote math lessons for grades six through eight. That's kind of who we're focused on supporting teachers and serving them. Um, so if you're interested in those and that applies to you, you can go to the website on the screen and that's one way that you can check them out. At the end of the presentation today, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna have a website for all of the different tools that I discussed and you'll be able to grab that bit.ly link at the end. Okay, so I've kind of broken this down by the different um, objective that the tool will help you with. And that's another thing that I find really overwhelming is when people ask for a question, lots of people are sharing different websites, but it doesn't always, they don't always explain what that website um, can be used for. So I'm trying to organize this for you. So if you are looking to record your screen, whether that be like what I'm doing where you're um, 
have a, sh a presentation of some sort and you're recording, recording your voice or your face to go along with it. If it means you want to record your screen in such a way that you are recording um, yourself discussing something or teaching something and then sending it, these are different options that work really well for you. I'm using Loom and I love Loom. It is free for teachers. It has no time limit. Um, you there, you can record both the screen or your face and then you can download a link. It very quickly populates a link for you or you can download it so you can store it yourself. And if you even wanna include a password, you can do that. So that way students have to use the password. It also tells you the very first time it's viewed. So that's kind of nice. Um, another favorite that I investigated because so many people recommend it is the website called Edpuzzle. Um, so Loom would probably be something that you are creating and you are teaching. Edpuzzle is different because it's where you're actually pulling content that is already created. You can also do it, but you would have to create that slideshow in advance or a video in advance. This is something because you can import lessons from Khan Academy, YouTube, there's even some science um, features in there. Um, so it allows you to bring in that lesson or that video and then you actually pause you can pause the video and require students to answer a question before the video progresses it's also really nice because um, it'll tell you who watched the whole video you can have different settings that they can't move forward until they answer the question things like that it has a lot of really neat features um, the learning curve was not too steep i don't think i i was able to pick up on it rather quickly the thing here is that um, students will need an account. So you you can have a free basic account. I believe it's about um, between eight and eleven dollars for uh, a larger account, which allows you to create more videos and keep more information. But your students will have to have an account. Um, so that would be something that you would have to set up with them. Whereas Loom, if you're just sharing information, that's you creating an account and sending them a link. You know, they don't have to log in. And then the last one I shared, um, I don't have a ton of use. Uh, with it and I really prefer Loom but a lot of people like Screencastify I think they also they like it because it's a Chrome extension so it's really easy to just include in your Google Chrome and it also auto saves your recordings to Google Drive um, again it's a shorter time limit they only allow five minutes or for $30 per year for teachers you can get extended time so that's something to consider let me show you what some of these websites look like so this is an example of loom.com. This is the homepage you'll see. And then over on the right here are the different options. So you can do your screen with the camera. You can just do your screen or you can just do your camera. Um, you can check if you have a Mac, this will show up on your top desk or top uh, bar next to the time and the Wi-Fi. Um, and then you can just click start recording. It's super easy. Um, and then at the end of the video, you can even add like a a link at the end that you want students to click. There is a limit, I think I think it's 100, but they've been really a little bit unclear. Right now they're supporting teachers for 100% free as long as you want, as long as the um, videos are, and I can only say great things about them. Edpuzzle looks a little bit like this. So here is a, one of our remote lessons where we pulled that in, or actually teacher pulled this video from YouTube into her Edpuzzle and once there, over here on the right, you can see that um, there was an open-ended question. So she wants students to answer that, and they have to either um, submit it, they can skip, or they can rewatch. So it kind of creates checkpoints along the way. Okay, so now let's look at annotating and screen recording. There are two other websites that um, came highly recommended that I checked out. One is called EduCreations. It is only available on an iPad, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it has a free basic account or $11.99 for a pro account. It allows you to pull in images or documents and then annotate or voice over them on the pro. Um, that's really nice. I'm going to show you some other uh, things that will work on an iPad, but um, this is one that came recommended. And then you can share the link or you can download it and store it yourself. And then if you're looking for something, um, there's another one called Dossery. It's, uh, they have an iPad that's free in the App Store, and then they have a $30 one for a desktop, and it basically allows you to do the same thing. Um, the nice thing about this is when you get back to your classroom, uh, if you have an iP um, iPad, they allow remote desktop control, which is really cool, um, and it might be something that you would enjoy using. 
Okay, now if you want to annotate PDFs, Google Slides, or PowerPoint, and you're not interested in using um, a combo, so on the slide before, there, this is going to annotate and record at the same time. These are things that I recommend if you are going to annotate on um, and use a recorder. So for example, you could annotate with um, good notes on an iPad, and then you could just record at the same time using um, Loom. That's what I like to do, but again, there are lots of other options. Um, GoodNotes is an app on the iPad, and it's a, a $7.99 one-time fee. You can connect your Google Drive or your Dropbox, and you just bring in the documents. So once you connect them, it's really nice. They're all there. You choose the document, and then you can annotate over it. Um, you can highlight, you can, um, you can add little images or drawings. It's really nice for um, some sort of presentation, especially if you're explaining something to a student. And then Lumen PDF is free for 14 days or $5 for the month, um, and it allows you to annotate um, by integrating Google Drive. Now, I will say annotating like with handwriting is gonna be so much easier on a tablet versus on a desktop, so I'm gonna show you some options there in just a minute. Okay, so here are tools for annotating. So if you have an iPad already, it may be compatible with an Apple Pencil, and it'll definitely be compatible with a stylus that you can grab off of Amazon. Um, and so that would be what I would most, um, I think would, you'd have the most success with because it allows you um, to use apps from the App Store and you can use it in different functions. Um, but if you don't and you're working on a desktop or a laptop, you might be interested in a Wacom board or an X-Pin board and their um, annotation. So it, it kind of works like a um, like a special piece of paper or a special, like, almost like, feels like a clipboard. Um, and it comes with the writing utensil and you'll be able to annotate using that writing utensil. So they um, either plug in or sync to your computer. And so that way you have that ability to write um, and actually write with your handwriting instead of trying to write with a mouse. And these are quite um, quite a bit more affordable than the iPad and the Apple Pencil. They both range in the $60 range, um, whereas your an iPad and an Apple Pencil is gonna be several hundred dollars. So that's another um, more affordable way that totally works um, and would make it a little bit easier to annotate. Okay, so let's say you want to add some um, interactive tools to your toolbox or your virtual classroom. Here are some that um, I, I would recommend. So we have Quizzes, Quizlet, and Gimkit. And they all are similar but a little bit different. So depending on if your students are familiar with any of these platforms, I would definitely start with the one they are most familiar with, if possible. Um, and then I would also start with ones that you feel most confident in. So all of them are gonna be some form of a review game type um, show, show game, things like that. So Quizzes is gonna be a student paced one. And in that you can actually create your own. So you can create matching um, vocabulary. It's kind of like a flashcard system that they can, um, that they create a game out of. It's also similar um, similar to some of these other ones, but the main difference here is that it is a student-paced one and that students will play individually. Um, in Quizlet, it's a collaborative one. So this is gonna require a little bit more tech on your side. Um, you're gonna have to have some form of um, way for grouping the students. If you've been using this in your classroom already, then I would I definitely suggest it. If you are, have not done it, it might be something that you um, consider for later when everyone's really up and going with this remote instruction or that you test out with like maybe one class of students um, before you plan for everyone to do that. Um, you can use Zoom to create breakout rooms to play Quizlet, Quizlet Live in a live setting and I've heard great things about that. Um, but again, it takes a little bit more work up front because it's a collaborative thing so students will have to be grouped together um, the, the students will have to be on the software at the same time, things like that. And then GimKit is um, another great game show review and it has its kind of twist to it is that it has power-ups so there are free and paid versions and you can use, again, create or use already created quizzes and the students do play individually here. There's a little bit more competition in the sense that students can earn power-ups and then they can play 
those to make their questions worth more points. Um, so, so there's a little bit more of an incentive there to, um, to or strategy, I should say. Um, but again, I would just recommend starting with whatever you feel most comfortable with, whatever your students feel most comfortable with. And if you haven't done any of these, then maybe that's something you kind of get your feet wet with remote instruction before introducing these. But um, these are all great options for games. Okay, I wanted to share a few more math-specific websites. Um, if you haven't tried Desmos, this is a really great activity. Everything on there is free. Um, they are all student-paced. Now, they are designed to be used in um, in a classroom environment, so there will be times um, within the student or the teacher guide, or even the student guide, where it'll like tell students to discuss, or it'll point out things that you, as the teacher, can discuss. So, obviously, those. Um, would be a little bit more difficult to integrate as far as um, facilitating that. However, all the activities students can do on their own. Um, they are um, activities and explorations around a math concept. So whereas the slide before where I talked about games, that would be um, something that you have already taught that you're using as a review or that you're um, practicing. These are, this. Um, the activities in Desmos are a lot of times intended to be used as an exploration or an introduction or an extension to um, a different concept. And I will say they're mostly focused on grades 6 through 12. Um, so that's something to consider when you're looking. Um, and students work individually in this, in this setting. And then if you're younger, there is a website called Dreambox. It's normally um, something that's a little bit on the pricier side and something that districts subscribe to. And I believe they had a parent account beforehand, but now because of COVID-19, they have really opened it up for a free 90-day trial for teachers and parents. So this might be something that you, um, again, this, if this is a new thing, that's one more login and one more thing that students are um, gonna have to keep track of and parents as well. But it may be something that if a parent is asking for additional support, you could point them to this um, free trial for 90 days. It's more focused on grades six through five. I believe it goes older, but, um, and these are again, more um, student-paced practice type activities um, in a gamified format. Um, and I wanted to share all of the links here. There, I have a blog post, and you can find it at this bit.ly link here, bit.ly dash um, backslash remote math tools. Make sure to capitalize the letters correctly. But um, there's more links on that page than I included in the presentation, but I did want the presentation to be something that was helpful and more succinct. Um, the, the website, the blog post has many more links and ideas, but I wanted to share what I figured were the, the best ones to get started with um, to address the specific needs you might have in your classroom. So I, um, I appreciate being here with you and I hope that this was something that you found helpful and um, can take back with you in your new e-learning environment. Um, so best of luck and I'm happy to answer any questions if you, if you have any. Thanks so much.